Did you know that hormones could be the reason that you're not losing the weight that you want? Sometimes even when you're doing your best at dieting, you won't get the results. You can be eating your best, exercising, trying to sleep at night, reducing stress, and yet you're not getting the results that you want. Hormones could be the problem. I've invited a top expert in the field to discuss these issues and help you take charge of your weight and well-being. So we're here today with Dr. Jolita Mitchell, who's a board-certified primary care physician and also board-certified in integrative medicine. And she runs the Integrative Weight Management Program at the Marcus Institute of Integrative Health. Welcome, Dr. Mitchell. Thanks so much. One of the things I wanted to really get into with you today is this relationship between weight, weight loss, and hormones and how people think about that. Because there's a lot of information about hormones and how hormones affect weight, but I think most people are confused about what hormones even are and what the different categories are and also what they can do about them. Yeah, so we used to think that weight and weight management was really an issue of willpower. But now what we're learning is that it's far more complicated there's hormones involved, there's metabolic factors, there's biochemical factors, and really it's a complicated interplay of, of several things. And hormones are really at the crux of that relationship. Hormones are chemical messengers. They're produced by endocrine glands. And once produced, they travel to different organs and tissues where they regulate several important processes. In terms of weight, Hormones regulate your appetite, your energy levels, your metabolism. They regulate how you put on weight and how you distribute weight as well. So they're very, very important in, in weight and metabolic health. Can you give us an example of some of the common hormones that are involved with weight and metabolic health? Sure. One critical hormone is cortisol. Cortisol. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cortisol, also known as the stress hormone, this is produced by the adrenal glands and it's produced in response to a stressor. Okay, so classically, uh, you know, you encounter a bear in the forest, let's say, and uh, your brain sends a signal to your adrenal glands to release cortisol. What cortisol does is prepares you for a reaction to the stressor. One of the main things that that's involved is a release of blood sugar or glucose into the bloodstream. And we need this blood sugar as fuel for our muscles to respond to this stressor, right? Are we running? Are we fighting? What are we doing? Um, and so in an ideal scenario, you have a stressor, your cortisol surges, you have your stress response, your stressor goes away, and then your hormones go back to a baseline level. Now, the problem is that this is not how we encounter stress in the modern world. So people are in a state of chronic stress, many people all of the time. So that would mean cortisol is chronically elevated, contributing to this imbalance in blood sugar. Absolutely. Not only do we see an increase or imbalance in blood sugar, but cortisol itself causes insulin to lower because you want that blood sugar to stay around longer, right? Um, and so we can use the example of uh, a medical condition that actually causes increased cortisol levels chronically. This is called Cushing's disease. This is an extreme example, but we can use it as a, a way to really look at what chronic cortisol elevation does to the body. So, and so what does somebody with Cushing's disease look like? So among other things, one of the things that's predominantly seen is an increase in body fat, mm -hmm. but not only an increase in general body fat, it tends to focus in the abdominal area. Um, and this is called visceral fat. This is fat that's located not outside of your abdominal muscles. This isn't the fat that you pinch. This is the fat that wraps around your organs and causes an increase in pant size. Um, and this is the fat that really is the most detrimental to our chronic health. It causes inflammation, it increases the rate of metabolic disease and other chronic diseases. So that's one thing that cortisol elevation does. It causes an increase in abdominal fat. Wow. What are some of the other hormones? 
Insulin is a huge hormone that plays a critical role as well. Um, insulin is produced by our pancreas. Um, it essentially regulates blood sugar as well as energy metabolism. It tells our cells to take in blood sugar. Now, what happens is with chronically high blood sugar levels, you know, be either because of diet or because of chronic stress, the body produces more and more insulin to keep up with that demand. And over time, what happens is that your receptors, they stop uh, listening to the insulin signal. So your body is putting that, that signal out, but um, your cells aren't listening. This is called insulin resistance, a very common pattern of hormone imbalance that we see associated with weight gain. Another hormone that plays a role in weight management is thyroid hormone. So thyroid hormone is produced by the thyroid gland. Everyone has one. Um, and thyroid hormone is crucial for the functioning of every cell in our body. It's related to metabolic rate, um, how we use um, uh, uh, food as fuel, digestion, and when there's underfunctioning of the thyroid in particular, we can see difficulty losing weight. A person can be doing all the right things, but progress is difficult. And what about the common hormones that people are thinking about once they hit those middle decades of life, such as estrogen and testosterone? Yeah. So uh, reproductive hormones, again, play a huge role in weight gain. Uh, when we think about estrogen, so this is made by the ovaries, um, but also it's made and produced in fat cells. Um, this is through a process called aromatization where uh, testosterone or other androgens are converted into estrogenic compounds. So estrogen, uh, it's one of those hormones where there's really a, a sweet spot. Too much estrogen can cause issues. Uh, we see weight gain, particularly in the thighs, hips, and breasts with excess estrogen. Um, I see this really commonly in reproductive age women who are struggling with weight. Um, there's also issues when estrogen is too low. And this is- Like around menopause. Correct. Around menopause, when estrogen drops precipitously, we see problems with weight gain again in that middle region, the abdominal region. Uh, part of this is because the metabolism changes of a, of a woman changes. Um, we see uh, issues with maintaining muscle mass during uh, menopause, which makes it harder to burn fat and to keep weight, weight off. What about testosterone for women or men? How does that affect weight? Testosterone and its cousin DHEA, uh, these are anabolic hormones, meaning that they build things up. So they're very important in uh, muscle mass um, and things like mood and energy, um, as well as libido. And so when there's a lack of testosterone for either women or men, we can certainly see problems in all those areas. Mm -hmm. So it seems that men in particular their sort of menopause called an andropause when they don't have a sufficient amount of testosterone going on that they have a problem with their lean muscle mass to body fat ratio. That's right. When it comes to hormones, all of these are closely interrelated. You know, you really have to look at the full picture and any imbalances in any of, of these hormones could really set the stage for weight gain or difficulty losing weight. And so it really takes a very comprehensive look at the whole picture in order to diagnose and to treat deficiencies. So in your weight management program, are you looking at all of these different hormones and deciding what the next best step is? How, how, do you, how do you approach people when you're looking at their hormonal health? It depends on their individual picture and scenario. So we always start with a comprehensive history and physical, and then based on that and where they are in their life, we determine you know what kind of screening needs to be done. In general, doing a hormonal assessment is part of the weight management planning stage. And do you actually look at things like cortisol? 
Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we can look at cortisol levels in the blood. We can look at cortisol levels through a, a urine test as well. So there's many different ways to look at you know, stress and how the stress hormone cortisol is affecting one's physiology. I think a lot of people have a disconnect about that, mm. right? They think the only thing they should be focusing on is calories, um, their macros, so to speak. And this whole idea that stress can directly impact how well you lose weight or maintain the optimal body weight is something that people just aren't thinking about. I agree. It might not make sense intuitively to, to many people, uh, but when we peel back the layers of, of what's really impacting one's uh, dietary habits and lifestyle habits, an increase in stress or cortisol can really be at the core. For example, one of the things that chronic stress does um, and chronically elevated cortisol does is it changes your appetite. It actually increases hunger specifically for foods that are rich in sugar, fat, and calories. Um, and so this is exactly the food that you want to avoid if you're looking to lose weight. But if you don't address stress and cortisol, you can be stacking the hormonal cards against you and make those dietary changes really difficult to keep up with. So I'm thinking about a lot of patients who come into the office and you start to go down this road of the impact of stress on body weight and they want to throw up their hands. Well, my life is my life. I've got the stressors that I have, so I guess there's just no hope for me. Mm. What do you say to that kind of person? Breaking the cycle of stress and weight gain uh, gives us a lot of opportunity. Um, there's many things that you can interject into your daily lifestyle that can really make a difference. That don't take a lot of time. Right. Right. Um, you know, one thing that comes to mind is really leveraging the studied benefit of something like mindfulness or meditation or breathing. Um, those uh, practices lower cortisol. And so that's really taking a root cause approach to what's causing some of these imbalances in the first place. You know, and what we've covered in some of the other podcasts is that it doesn't have to be this hour meditation that if people can actually learn some techniques, some simple breathing techniques, a couple of meditative exercises, but a few minutes, a couple of times a day, can really make a big difference in resetting the nervous system, which then has the downstream effect of hormonal regulation and more optimal weight. Yes, it also helps with sleep. The more that we downregulate our nervous system, the more restorative our sleep is. And sleep is, again, one of those really foundational lifestyle factors that help with hormonal balancing and ultimately weight. You know, one of the things that in a, in inadequate sleep uh, leads to is an increase in the hunger hormone known as ghrelin. Ghrelin is what tells our brain, hey, I'm hungry. And so after a bad night's sleep, you actually have more hunger hormone around. You have less satiety hormone around, something known as leptin. And so it takes more food in order to gain that feeling of fullness. Yeah, that reminds me of those on-call days as a resident and junior attending where you really do tend to like want lots of comfort food, lots of high calorie foods after that sleep deprivation. Yes. And there's so many people that just live a life of chronic sleep deprivation. Right. And so in terms of breaking that cycle, focusing on sleep can, is, is one of the most important things to start with. We know that exercise will have a direct impact on weight, but is part of the mechanism by which that occurs related to hormones? It is. Regular exercise releases endorphins, right? Those are our feel-good hormones that in of themselves promote a feeling of relaxation. So that's one, another way we can break that cycle. But it also turns out that regular exercise, it increases your resilience to future stress. So it creates this buffer that makes you more efficient at coping with stressors when they come your way. Again, another really important foundational change to make. All right, so it sounds like for 
optimal weight management, we of course have to be paying attention to what we're eating, but there's a lot more behind it than that. And we have to understand what's going on with us hormonally and do all the things that will make that as optimal as possible from back to eating, but exercise, sleep, and coping with stress. Hormone replacement is another tool that's available to us. If the imbalances or the deficiencies are significant enough, you may need a little bit of replacement to really get a leg up and give you the opportunity to make these changes sustainably. And that could be thyroid if somebody's thyroid deficient. That could, in the extreme case, I guess, insulin, once they become insulin resistant, but you don't want to get to that place, obviously. But also even hormones like estrogen and testosterone if somebody's a little bit older and they're just not making enough anymore. Right. And this, and you've seen that really impact body weight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The classic scenario of a postmenopausal woman, let's say, who's just not able to lose the five to 10 pounds around her, her abdomen. Hormone replacement therapy is fantastic for that. Not only for weight management and body composition, but it also saves her, uh, it also impacts her bone density in a positive way. So um, it can definitely be an important part of the treatment plan. Well, I know I learned a lot today. Dr. Julita Mitchell, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.